Well, I'm standing here with the Reverend Greenwood at Belur Church, just on the outskirts of Ramsey. It's a church that hasn't been used for some years, and it's slightly in the news because someone's just put in an application to turn it into a house. Uh, the first thing to ask you is, this chapel, as I recall, or as I'm aware, was actually built uh, in the 17th century, is that right? Yes, there had in fact been a site of worship here for more than a thousand years. It's an ancient Manx Keel site. This particular building dates from the 1600s, but has been altered and repaired several times since then, but hasn't really been needed by the church since the early 1800s, when St Paul's Church in Ramsey was built to replace this building. This originally came into being, I'm told, as a chapel of ease for Mackled, because the people of Ramsey found it quite perilous in the winter to get to Mackled, which was their nearest place of worship. Yes, that, that's true. The people would have had to go to Mackled Church from here, so this was built as a chapel of ease for them. Of course, after the building of this church and later St Paul's, they didn't need to go to Mackled. One of the problems which remains from that date is that the ownership of the churchyard is still in the hands of the vicar and warden of Mackled, and the church is the responsibility of the vicar and wardens of St Paul's in Ramsey. So there's slight problems with that practical arrangement. A rather peculiar arrangement, and no doubt if people complain to you that the grass hasn't been cut here, it's not actually your responsibility. That is true. I have to tell them to go and ask the vicar of Mackled. On, on a day-to-day -day or a monthly basis, presumably you found there's no use for this, there's no purpose now when your congregation is centred at St Paul's. That is true, we, we have no need for the, for the church building. It has occasionally been used for summer services, just a few evenings in the summer, but not for the last three or four years. There, there's nothing we, we could do here which we can't do as well, if not better, at St Paul's. And although we wouldn't want to see the church demolished, we, we can't afford to run both buildings and we've been actively seeking alternative uses of the church over the last three years and the possibility of it being turned into a private dwelling place is just one of those possibilities. In terms of the diocesan finances, who's actually responsible for the fabric of, of a parish church? Is it the vicar and his congregation or is there a diocesan fund? There's no diocesan fund. The, the vicar and the wardens and with them the church council are responsible for their own church. So you've got to find the money and raise the money yourself from parishioners and other ben beneficiaries? Yes, we do. Mm. So naturally, if you can't use the building, you're not keen to be spending money on it? No, it's still a drain on our resources because obviously we have to do basic maintenance to prevent it falling down. And obviously if there's vandalism, we have to pay for, it, for the repair. Anyone who came along to buy it then, I mean, that would be an attractive option and it's happened in a number of places on the island. It would be the best option because we, we ideally want a solution which takes the church off our hands. Many of the solutions proposed would still leave us as being responsible for maintaining the, an empty building. Obviously if it became a private dwelling, whoever bought it would then own it. But in fact the building then would be much better assured of long-term preservation because as a house a person would be living in it, it would be well kept and well cared for. And also it, it would mean that the building would survive as part of the, the Manx National Heritage. Yeah. Just on a technical point, if somebody did actually live here, would the graveyard still be consecrated? Would they be obliged to keep the graves here? The graveyard would remain. There's a possibility that it could be tidied up and the gravestones reordered, but then that can happen to any churchyard. Mm -hmm. So it would need to be somebody who didn't mind living in a churchyard, but there are such people. And of course one bonus is that because the churchyards are maintained in the rates, you get your gardening done free of charge. <laughs> well that would be a bonus, but I mean, is it ever the case that a churchyard can actually be completely removed? I'm honestly not sure the, the, the absolute final last word on the legality of that. Usually the answer is no, and certainly in this case the churchyard would be kept, and the only thing is it probably would be tidied up. Yeah and made part of the attractive surroundings to the building. So that could be a happy solution if it ever came about. I mean, the church is in the strange position of finding itself the owner of an enormous part of the national heritage, and yet it's not funded to the extent that it can preserve these buildings. 
do you feel, or does the church feel maybe that the Manx government should perhaps recognise the historic value of these buildings and, and give more assistance? Yes, I think that's true. It's, it's the same in England as well, that the church ends up owning and having to maintain most of the national heritage and everybody expects the church to do this, which the church would do if it had the money, but, but it can't go on maintaining national heritage at its expense for everybody else. Mm -hmm. There must be a better way of doing it. I mean, we do have a sentimental attachment to these buildings. We're in the situation where we don't want to see them go, but no one wants to pay to keep them. That's quite true, mm -hmm. which is why the possibility of becoming a, a private house might be the best long-term solution. It would keep the church in good condition and it would be a, a means by, way, by which the church would be relieved of its responsibility of maintaining the building. Mm -hmm.